Hello folks, welcome to the Comlex Instant Review Podcast, where you can get information on how to prepare for the Comlex and USMLE board exam. Today I want to talk about platelet disorders, specifically let's start with thrombocytopenia, the definition of which is a platelet count less than 150,000. Now, thrombocytopenia has various risks of bleeding depending upon the platelet count. So for example, if the platelet count on the board exam question is greater than 100,000, then there's really no increased risk of bleeding. If the platelet count is between 50 to 100,000, then there's a risk with major trauma and you want to proceed with general surgery. The reason why I'm telling you this risk of bleeding scale is because patients with a lower platelet count um, have a higher risk of bleeding and again that's life-threatening and so you want to take appropriate precautions. Patients who have 20,000 to 50,000 platelet counts will have a risk of bleeding that's increased and so there's a risk of bleeding with minor surgery, minor trauma, and you have to be careful about that. Patients with less than 20,000 platelet count will have a risk of spontaneous bleeding. So that's a key word here. Spontaneous bleeding, it's less than 20,000. And finally, the highest risk is with patients who have a platelet count less than 10,000. And there is a risk of severe and life-threatening bleeding all the time. So again, when you're looking at the board exam question, you see that patient has thrombocytopenia, which is less than 150,000. Then you look at the platelet count to see how low is it. Is it really low? Is it less than 10,000? Or is it greater than 100,000 and depending on that you may want to pick a different answer in terms of your treatment. If it's really low you want to go to surgery okay and you want to fix what's fix the bleeding um, and if it's really low you also want to keep in mind that any sort of a surgical procedure um, may be contraindicated because of the extensive risk of bleeding. With 50,000 to 100,000 you can generally proceed with surgery but again, as the number drops lower, there's risks of spontaneous bleeding, minor trauma or surgery can cause bleeding, and so your treatment options will vary. So what exactly causes decreased production of platelets? Well, number one cause you can remember is a hypocellular bone marrow caused by aplastic anemia, thiazides, antibiotics, and also alcohol. So those three are the big causes for hypocellular bone marrow, where you're not producing enough. Also, a cellular bone marrow um, would have causes such as leukemia, myelodysplastic proliferative syndromes, megaloblastic anemia. All of those are cellular bone marrows. Um, and marrow replacement is with myelofibrosis hematologic and solid malignancies as well as granulomas. So remembering the causes of thrombocytopenia by decreased production is pretty simple. Hypocellular, cellular, or marrow replacement. And you can base upon that determine the etiology. The number two cause is because of increased destruction. So first we talked about decreased production, now we're talking about increased destruction. It can be immune mediated, where the primary causes are usually idiopathic. Secondary causes, however, are due to HIV, herpes, um, viruses, systemic lupus erythematosus, antiphospholipid syndrome, lymphoproliferative disorders, CLL, and heparin, um, quinidine, sulfonamides, vancomycin, all those medications can lead to secondary destruction of the platelets. Also autoimmune such as post transfusion. And finally there is also non-immune mediated causes such as DIC, HUS, and TTP. Um, medications like ticlopidine and clopidogrel, vasculitis, preeclampsia slash help syndrome, cardiopulmonary bypass, cavernous hemangiomas. Now, keep in mind that there is abnormal distribution or pooling uh, that can lead to another cause of thrombocytopenia. So you have splenic sequestration, dilutional hypothermia, 
and also um, causes such as ehrlichiosis, babesiosis, and Rocky Mountain spotted fever are all um, causes of platelet destruction. So how do you evaluate a patient with thrombocytopenia? Well, the CBC with differential is definitely helpful. You look at the history showing splenomegaly, you look for enlarged lymph nodes, any bleeding. Also, the peripheral smear, if it shows increased destructions, will show schistocytes, and those are the large platelets. And if there's decreased production, then you'll have blasts, hypersegmented PMNs, and um, you want to also rule out pseudothrombocytopenia, which is due to platelet clumping. And the platelet count in non-EDTA containing tube um, can be looked at and you'll probably see a citrate containing yellow top tubes. So if you see those words on the board exam, then you're thinking about pseudothrombocytopenia. Now, let me go over a differential, kind of like an algorithm to help you narrow down your diagnosis. Patient presents with thrombocytopenia, you look at the platelet count and it's less than 150,000. You get the um, abnormal CBC, or a smear and you see schistocytes, what are you thinking? DIC, HUS, and TTP should be your number one differential. If you see spherocytes, you should look for Evan syndrome, hypersplenism. And if you look at pancytopenia or blasts, then think about aplastic anemia and leukemia. Finally, leukoerythroblastic appearance on the smear should key you in on myelopephysis, okay? Now, if the CBC and smear is normal, you're thinking autoimmune disease, medications, infection, you want to rule out the causes that we talked about previously. Additionally, if the patient comes in with anemia, look at the retic count, LDH, haptoglobin, to detect any signs of hemolysis. And if there's hemolytic anemia, you want to check for the PTPTT, fibrinogen, the D-dimer, the Coombs, and the ANA. Keep in mind that you want to look for signs of splenomegaly and just generalize signs of infection of lymph node enlargement on your physical exam. And that was a overview of some of the differential diagnosis and how to approach thrombocytopenia. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional complex and USMLE board review courses, podcasts, and lectures. And also visit our blog to get daily advice on how to prepare for medical school. Good luck in your board review.